Okay, I'm going to just demonstrate a simple stopwatch app written with App Inventor. Uh, this will not be very accurate, it's just going to show how the tense ticks down, ticks up rather, and that changes the seconds. When the seconds reaches 59 and turns over to zero, then the minutes will become incremented. When this hits 59 and goes to zero, then it bumps the hours up by one. Maximum number of hours is 99. Minutes 59, seconds 59, and 9 for the tenths of a second. So that's basically how it works. Start and stop or in this button reset once the timer has a value other than zero you can set that back to all zeros and that's how it works now looking at the designer each of the digits for the stopwatch consists of button buttons that have a image background that I got from cooltext.com and I've uploaded that here. Um, same thing with the reset and the start stop button. They uh, use the same background image. This makes it look nice. Okay, the blocks when when you click the start button the text of the start button is checked for start if it contains start that means that we need to set the start milliseconds variable global variable to the current milliseconds of the system time which is taken from the now block and we also need to start the elapsed clock timer block uh, elapsed time clock and so that timer starts and as soon as it starts we get the n millisecond value from the system time converted to milliseconds. We then compare those two values by doing a subtraction in milliseconds minus start milliseconds. What we want is to know is has a tenth of a second elapsed and that would be represented as 100 milliseconds. So if that value is greater than or equal to 100 milliseconds these blocks get executed if it hasn't reached 100 milliseconds yet then we drop out of this timer block and then when it ticks another event it comes back in and it checks the new in millisecond value until it does reach at least 100 milliseconds now it might be over 100 milliseconds so in order to compensate for that we set start milliseconds for the next cycle to n milliseconds minus elapsed milliseconds minus 100. So if it was 104 milliseconds this would give us 4 milliseconds. We'd be subtracting 4 milliseconds from whatever the n millisecond value was to make the next start millisecond and this keeps the display on track with the internal clock or system clock and that's been tested for 30 minutes and I couldn't see any real difference between the system clock reading and the app reading. So once we have reached 100 milliseconds and compensated for if it's over, we set the tenths button value to the next digit whatever it would be if it's zero then it would be one if it's one would be two if it's nine then it would be set to zero 
and that's taken care of by adjust digits. Adjust digits adds one to the digits and then it checks is it greater than the limit which is nine for the tenths place for this place right here. So if it is greater then it replaces it's instead of putting a ten which this would have given you nine plus one is ten it replaces it with a zero and then if it is from zero to to nine or zero to eight then it would just return that number so um, that's how adjust digits works so this cascades through as each value gets increased till it reaches 9 for the tenths, 59 for the seconds, 59 for the minutes, and 99 for the hours. As these values reach their limits, we need them to go from 59 to 0 and from 99 to 0. And that's handled by this. And these are our limits shown here. That's how adjust digits takes care of that. And in addition for hours, minutes, and seconds, we need to pad a zero in front if that number is from one to nine or zero to nine. So we always want two digits to display just for it to look nice. So that's what the pad zero does. If the, num if the digits value is less than 10, then we put a zero in the front using the join block. Uh, if it already has two digits, we just return that value. So pad zero doesn't have any effect. We didn't need that for adjust it for the tenths place because we only wanted one digit to show here, and that's always from zero to nine. The looking at the uh, going back to let's say that we've got our timer running and notice that the stop is displayed now it was start so if I click that start stop button again it's going to check is start button text equal to start no is it equal to stop yes then it's going to turn off the timer and it's going to stop updating the clock. So we're going to see that happen now. Okay, so I click stop and it stopped the clock and it's at whatever the last value was. If I'd restart it, it would just continue from that place. Now if I want to reset the clock to its all zero value, I go, I click the reset button and what that does is it stops the timer if the timer were running and I hadn't just pressed the, the stop button here. Um, then it sets hours, minutes, and seconds and tenths buttons to all zeros. And that's how that works. Um, the toggle clock's timer enabled just toggles whether it's enabled or disabled whether the, t the timer is running or not and if it is enabled we want if it is running we want stop to be displayed here if it's if it's not running we want start to be displayed there so that's how the toggling between stop and start are handled and I think I've covered everything. Start milliseconds, end milliseconds, those are global variables. So I think that's about it. Thanks for watching.